In Japan, there's a person you'd want to ask what inspired him. Inventor of the Kaatsu training method, Dr. Yoshiaki Sato. People are working out with cuffs on their arms and legs. This man does his training with a belt strapped around his arm. After about 10 minutes, it is quite clear that his muscle has bulged. This is the Kaatsu training method that Sato has developed. It is a short, low-intensity workout that is highly effective. This is the special belt. The pressure can be altered by controlling the amount of air. Wrap the belt around the upper arm or leg. Then, using this machine, the Katsu Master, the appropriate pressure is applied to each person. The most distinctive feature of Katsu training is that it produces a significant effect in a short time using extremely light loads. Applying a suitable pressure to the upper arms and legs through which arteries and veins run moderately restricts blood flow. When that happens, the brain senses danger and sends an order to the heart to increase blood flow. The pressure within veins rises, blood travels to the most remote capillaries and blood vessels dilate. Repeatedly applying and removing pressure increases the diastolic and contractile functions of seldom used capillaries, and this improves the blood circulation of the whole body. Also, as a result of katsu training, the nitric oxide produced by endothelial cells lining the inside of the blood vessels starts to increase. Nitric oxide is involved in the constriction and relaxation of blood vessel walls and the control of inflammatory cells. With continued katsu training, nitric oxide increases and acts on the inside of blood vessels, restoring their elasticity. Katsu training also has a toning effect on muscle. Muscle can be divided into two types. Fast muscle, which is mainly used in activities such as sport to generate explosive power, and slow muscle, which is more suited to endurance. Because these muscles develop in different ways, normally they cannot be toned at the same time. In katsu training, because blood flow is suitably restricted, slow muscles run out of oxygen first. This tricks the brain into thinking the body is performing high-intensity exercise, and so fast muscle, which normally takes time to act, also starts working. The result is that both kinds of muscle can be toned at the same time. As muscle becomes fatigued, it produces lactic acid. Katsu training increases the amount of lactic acid, which in turn stimulates receptors within the muscle. With a rise in the concentration of lactic acid in the blood, the brain issues an order to increase the secretion volume of growth hormone. Growth hormone circulating within the body causes fat to be burned and activates metabolism. Today, I am at the Katsu training room of the Cardiac Rehabilitation Program at the University of Tokyo Hospital. Since 2004, I've been working with the doctors at Tokyo University to study the effectiveness of adopting Katsu training for the rehabilitation of various diseases. Doctors Nakajima and Morita both took my classes and are certified Katsu instructors. They have adopted Katsu training for their patients and are conducting a study at the University of Tokyo Hospital.
We have had a total of about 1,000 patients in roughly a year try out Kansu with no side effects. It has been shown to be safe if done properly. We now know that it helps people with dementia. Yes, particularly with their motor behavior. This is a 78-year-old patient suffering from dementia. Her symptoms had progressed, and she was having difficulty walking as her knees and back were bent. But when she went through a rehab program with Katsu training for two months, as you can see, her symptoms improved enormously. There are many cases similar to hers. It would be great if we were able to collect more evidence and further our research and hopefully lead to advanced medical treatment in Japan. And from a medical point of view, as a vascular specialist, I think it's very sound and rational. It's amazing that he discovered where to apply the pressure and so forth all by himself. Today, Sato's katsu training has gained the confidence of the medical community. But his inspiration had actually derived from an old Japanese custom. I was at a Buddhist memorial service at a relative's. I was sitting on the tatami in the traditional Japanese style. I was heavy, so my legs began to go numb. I stayed still for about 40 minutes, but I couldn't bear it any longer. I stretched out my leg and started to massage my calf. It was then. I massaged it like this, but it was so tight right here. And then I thought, they're tight because the muscles are tense. It meant that it was the same state as doing this, carrying the barbells on the shoulder and doing this. It's called a calf raise. So I realized that it's the same state as doing that exercise, which led me to believe that maybe restricting blood flow is the way to build muscles. People who had broken their legs would come in to do katsu training because their legs had gotten skinny and they'd come in to ask for some help. And a lot of people started coming. People with too much fat, with no muscles, and with various kinds of diseases. They all came to train. I had this enormous amount of data from these people, and in 1984, the accumulated data was used to develop the training method. Katsu training started in a small gym. Sato applied katsu to many, many people. A cerebral palsy patient whose arm was paralyzed was able to move her arm after katsu training. A professional athlete who was considering retiring after an injury made a miraculous comeback after katsu training. I wanted everybody to know about katsu. That was my dream. But however effective katsu was to all these people, there were no formal medical data. Doctors and scientists simply dismissed katsu as mere folk remedy. Of course, they couldn't accept it. They couldn't believe that tying her cuffs would lead to a cure. They wouldn't even look into the mechanism. The training method of restricting blood flow, which no one had ever heard of, was always met with skepticism. But Sato believed that the day would come when people would understand the benefits of katsu. And finally, in 1995, a huge breakthrough for katsu training came. Mr. Tamari, the president of the Japan Bodybuilding Federation, introduced me to Professor Nao Kataishi of Tokyo University. He is an expert in muscle physiology and a former winner of the Japan Bodybuilding Championship and had come to try out katsu. As he is an expert in muscle training, I had some hopes that he might understand the benefits of katsu. But, at first, he was skeptical. 
He was convinced that it wasn't gonna work. I thought, here we go again. He's not gonna believe it. But when I wrapped the Katsu belt around Professor Ishii's arm, the moment he started the training, his face lit up. This is amazing. He knew the instant he gripped those dumbbells. This is absolutely phenomenal. He said that this was going to be huge in the future. So collaborative research with Professor Ishii on Katsu training began. A scientific assessment of Katsu, which until then had not been investigated, suddenly moved forward. In 1997, he obtained a patent for Katsu training and Kaatsu quickly became popular. At present, in 2010, there are over 1,800 Katsu training facilities across the country. Not just in Japan, but studies are in preparation abroad as well. In China, at the Jilin University 3rd Clinical Hospital, they are starting research on the medical application of Kaatsu. On this particular day, doctors from China were visiting Sato. Studies on the efficacy of Kaatsu on diabetes and regenerative medicine will be carried out in China. Sato-sensei has been studying this for 44 years. And I'm now 45 years old. <laughs> when I heard that he'd been dedicated to the study of Katsu ever since I was one, I felt there was no dodging about with this man. 